Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to start by talking about Venn diagrams. <clears throat> now, I know you've used Venn diagrams before, probably in English or in reading, where you've had to um, show relationships that exist between things. Well, we can do that in math also. All right, so in our Venn diagram, we're going to start with a basic set of numbers. So if you draw an oval, um, and in it, we're going to put the words whole numbers. Whole numbers are kind of like the most basic numbers, right? They are whole quantities. There's no parts, just whole. So <clears throat> the first whole number is zero, right? You can have zero of something. You can have one of something, two of something, three of something. Those are called whole numbers. Now, whole numbers are part of a larger group of numbers. So we'll draw a larger ring around. And these are called integers. Now, we've talked about integers. And if you remember, the definition of an integer is any whole number and its opposite. So if whole numbers are one, two, three, let's say. The opposites of those numbers would be negative one, negative two, and negative three. But still, we're not dealing with any parts. These are still whole quantities and then also their opposites. When we start to think about parts, then we have a larger group of numbers that are called rational numbers. Rational numbers by definition, include any numbers that can be written in fraction form. So let's think about what that means. One half is a fraction, very clearly in fraction form. So though is 0 0.428. Now we read that 428 thousandths, which is a fraction, but we have a decimal form for that. So um, what other rational numbers can you think of? How about negative three-fourths? Yeah, we can have negative parts, negative fractions, negative decimals, negative two-tenths in decimal form, or it could be written in fraction form also. So this is a Venn diagram for math for numbers. Now there's more to it than this, but this is the sixth grade version of it. When you get to seventh grade, we're going to add a couple more sets to this. So what I'd like you to do is lightly shade every set of numbers in a different color. Pause the video and then come back. Okay, so now I'd like you to make three columns. The first one is whole, whole numbers. Second one is integers. The third one is rational numbers. I'm going to write a number over here on the right, first number 75. We're going to put a check mark under each column that the number 75 could be classified as. So is 75 a whole quantity? Yeah, it is. It is a whole quantity. There's no parts. Is it an integer? Well, if you remember, integers are whole numbers and their opposites. It doesn't say whole numbers or their opposites. So it also classifies as an integer. And if you remember, that oval that you drew for whole numbers sat inside the integer oval. So that means all whole numbers are also considered integers. So then by that thinking, is 75 a rational number? Well, if a rational number by definition is any number that can be written as a fraction, 75 can be written as a fraction. It is a rational number because you could write 75 over one, as a fraction. You could also write 150 divided by 2 has a value of 75. So no matter, even though this number 75 is written as a whole quantity, it can be written in fraction form. And these are two fractions with a value of 75. And that makes them whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. So what about negative 3? Is that considered a whole quantity? Well, no, it's not because it's negative. So we would not check off the first column, but it is the opposite of a whole number, right? Negative three is the opposite of three. So it is considered an integer and it is a rational number because we could write it as a fraction in that form. 
we could also write it as negative six divided by two. Now you notice I said divided by, fractions are division problems. So whenever you see a fraction bar, you could read it as a fraction or you could read it as a division problem. All right, speaking of fractions, how about three fourths? Three fourths is also three divided by four. Is that a whole quantity? No, it's not. Is it an integer? Well, integers are whole numbers and they're opposites. It would not classify as an integer either, but it would be a rational number because it is in fraction form. All right, let's do one more. 35 hundredths as a decimal number. You can see that, move this a little bit. 35 hundredths is how you read this number. Now, next week we'll practice reading decimal numbers some more. Is it a whole quantity? No, it's a part, right? De fraction, uh, decimals are another way of expressing a fraction. So no, they are not whole quantities. So if it's not a whole quantity, then it's not gonna be an integer either. But it is a rational number because 35 hundredths could be written as a fraction of 35 hundredths. Now we could also simplify that, right? 35 and 100 have a common factor of five. So we could divide both the numerator and denominator by five and get 7 20ths, which is equivalent to this decimal number of 35 hundredths. Okay, so your assignment right now is to do numbers eight through 11 in your book on page 50. And then I also wanna see a picture of the notes you took from today's video. So if you could take a picture, send it to me on Google Classroom, that would be great. See you later.